Hello and welcome to another busy webinar. This is Dave Meyer with BusyWeb here on one of the longest days of the year. It's the 22nd of June, so happy summer, everyone. We're going to talk about what to say and how to say it today on behalf of Constant Contact and Dave Meyer of BusyWeb. We're delighted to help you and to walk you through things today on how to use words and images to craft your email messages. Getting started here, just wanted to share with you how to connect with us and to ask us questions. One brief note, I am going to be doing a very, very brief overview of this entire presentation, a 10 minute or less version on Facebook Live immediately after this event. So if you'd like to join us there, by all means do so um, to get kind of a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Or if you'd like the down and dirty, the fully in-depth version, keep with us right now. Um, if you would like the slides for today's event, just send me an email at dave at busyweb.com. Or if you have any questions or issues during the event, you can give a hold of us at 612-4-BUSY-O, 612-424-9990. Wanted to share a couple of things with you before we get into the full details, and let's go there now. First, if you would like to ask questions during the event, there's some easy ways in which you can do that. On the page that you're visiting that you receive the email from, you can simply click under number one, as highlighted right here, on this Google Plus link. If you click on this Google Plus link, what it's going to do is take you into a secondary page. And from this page, you'll be able to click play. So you'll note that it says Q&A and live in the upper hand corner. If you go ahead and click yes on the, are you going to watch, that would be very nice too. That way we know how many folks are planning to watch today. But if you click this play button, it's going to open up in a new window and you'll be able to watch the event live in full screen. From there, the cool thing that you can do inside of this is in the very lower right hand corner of this window, you'll note now that there's a button that says ask a new question. So if you click the ask a new question button, you can ask a question here. I will look at that um, during the event a few times and I will answer your questions live on the webinar today. And uh, just to save ourselves a little bit more, if you miss the cutoff for questions, Send a note to Dave at busyweb.com and we'll connect. So there you go. So if you have a question, by all means, ask that question here. But if you're feeling shy, you don't want to ask a question live during the webinar, or you would like much more to connect with us personally and ask that question, just send an email to dave at busyweb.com and we'll take care of it for you. All right, there's one more thing that I wanted to call your attention to. If you've been subscribed to our emails, or if you're a fan of ours on Facebook, you might have noticed some strange things happening. We are getting ready for a very big announcement on Friday. And so we've had this fun coming soon event coming up. And right now, the great and powerful Larry, our lead developer, has a, has a big announcement today. And if you click on this click here to win button, you could win $30 at Adrian's Tavern. This is for local folks, of course. It's a local event, but uh, would love to have you click that image to subscribe or just answer a quick question. I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks like. But if you ask that question, do your customers know what to do next on your website? You either say yes, no, or I don't know, and enter in your name, your company name and your email address, and you're going to be answer, or you're entered for the drawing for 30 bucks to Adrian's Tavern. So I hope you do that. Again, from the Coming Soon page, which is live on our Facebook page. So we'd love to see you on that. All right, let's get down to business and talk about why we're here. We are first here to go through the details on what to say and how to say it. But how do you know what we know? Well, BusyWeb is a digital marketing agency, and we do this stuff all the time for our clients. So that's our credentials. Um, I've personally been doing this stuff for 22 years now, was just named Entrepreneur of the Year at the Twin West Chamber of Commerce, and our team is full of seasoned professionals that are great at creating content and websites for our clients. So if you need any of those things, or if you just wanna talk more about how you can improve your marketing messaging, go ahead and give us a call. All right, so 
What we're here to talk about, of course, is content. At its core, marketing is about getting real results. You're trying to elicit a physical response. That might be clicks and downloads, visits, reservations or appointments, or of course calls into your business, and all of that should generate something like either revenue or donations or interest. So, content, and this is kind of, kind of slanted towards email content, but really any content is going to work for this. Why is content so important? It's really the currency of the entire web. The content that you have on your website is what tells Google what to do and how to rank you. If you don't have content on specific keywords on your website, there's no way you're going to show up. Be the source your readers know, like, and trust, and answer your customers' questions in order to gain that currency. So you're trying to be as helpful as humanly possible. So from the perspective of emails, what kind of content are we even talking about? So in emails, it all basically boils down to a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. Email content is made up of words, images, and videos that you use in email campaigns that's designed to attract, convert, and retain an audience. Or in other words, engage, inform, capture, and convert. If you've heard me talk before, you've heard me say that dozens of times. When you're sending out an email to the people on your contact list, you want to make sure that it's relevant and interesting and includes a clear call to action. So the more you can get right to the point, the better people are going to be at taking the step that you want. Again, email marketing, all marketing really, is about trying to elicit a specific response. But if you don't tell people what to do right away, there's a dramatic decrease in chance that they're actually going to take that step. So this is an example of an email from a company called Great Vacation Retreats. At the top of their message, they have a great picture that prominently features their brand, a text block that announces the deal, and a paragraph that describes it, and finally and most importantly, a link that's a call to action for their readers to view their available vacation rentals. Even if they didn't list the individual rentals in this email, they have more than enough information that communicates the action they want their audience to take to book a rental in Kauai. As a bonus, the approach that the Great, Vac that Great Vacation Recruits took with this email is pretty much mobile friendly. It's a single column template, there's not too much text, and it's not too long. This email is going to look great no matter where the reader opens it, whether it's on their computer or on their phone. You need to remember that you're not writing for you. When you're creating content from scratch, you're not writing for yourself, you're writing for your audience. Remember to make your messages relevant, short, and focused. Think of it this way. If you're selling drill bits, what you're truly selling is not drill bits, you're selling holes. So the hole that you fill for your client is what you want to focus on. No one cares how many years you've been in business, what you do, the approach that you take. What they care is, I've got a problem, can you fix it for me? So your email shouldn't be telling recipients every single thing that you do, and it shouldn't include extraneous info. You should make it relevant to your audience by thinking about the conversations you've had before with your best clients, customers, and members. After every interaction, you may want to jot, some down, jot down some ideas that can help you expand on a topic. Relevance is very important, and here's why. 38% of email recipients will unsubscribe if they think the content in your email is boring or irrelevant. And when a person unsubscribes, you can't connect with them again. 32% of folks will send irrelevant content into their spam folder. And that could impact like how that could impact how email providers like Gmail, Yahoo, Comcast, or any ISP sort your future messages. So think very carefully about how you deliver your messaging and continue to strive to make it as relevant and interesting to your clients as possible. So that's all preamble. Here's what we're going to be talking through in detail. We're going to go through how to create content, how you come up with ideas for words, images, and calls to action that you can use in your marketing. We're going to talk about curating content and how to find and share content from outside sources that you can use in your marketing. We're going to talk about extending your reach beyond email using social media and the web. 
and then we'll talk about a few final next steps. So without further ado, I'm gonna give you one chance. I'm just gonna check back, make sure that we don't have any questions. Again, if you do have questions, the way to post those questions is simply from the events page to click on, oh, let me go back here one click, to click right here on the Google Plus link. That Google Plus link will open up this page. And from this page, you'll click on ask a new question in the big green button. If you're feeling shy, again, feel free to send me an email at davidbusyweb.com, either to ask questions or to ask for this entire deck. All right, so let's talk about create. What do you write about in your marketing? This is one of the biggest questions and hurdles people encounter when they set out to create an email or any social media post. The good news is that you know your organization and your clients better than anyone, and there's a world of ideas out there for you. First and above all else, write about what you know as a business owner that your clients don't know. This is an opportunity to share your knowledge and raise your profile as an interesting person or expert in your field. Here's a few types of ideas and content that you can share with your audience. Look at what's on the screen and think about ways that you can explore the ideas with content about your business. Let's talk about a few of them. First, how about offerings? If you have a product, you can write a paragraph describing what that offering is and use photos or a video to share quick product demonstrations or tutorials. If you have an event coming up, send out all the details in a short email, including a link to register to the event. Updates. Do you have a new location? Have you hired a new employee? Or do you have a well-known employee retiring? Send out a biography and a photo to your customers and clients. Updates can go out in the form of newsletters or even press releases. Perhaps you're a nonprofit and you've received a big grant. Perfect reason to send out an email update. If you had a recent event, send out a survey asking recipients how it was, or send an email to share photos of the event. Education. You are an expert in your field. Write about what you know that your audience doesn't. This is your opportunity to weigh on with your perspective on a study or a news story. If you sell a product, you can make a video that demonstrates how to use it. You can also share your know-how. Let's say you own a landscaping company. You can send out an email early in the spring and lay out a good planting schedule for your clients. Entertainment. Don't be afraid to show your fun side. Have you seen a funny YouTube video that relates to your field? Or if you've heard of an interesting, funny, or inspiring quote that you want to share? Or perhaps to invite your employees to make a cool behind-the-scenes video? That's all stuff that you can show your environment, your personality, and your team together. So if you have ideas and things that you'd like to share, I'd encourage you to add that as a comment under the Ask a Question field. So if you have questions or comments, if you have examples of things that you could share for content, would love to hear that because of, of course, we're trying to be as helpful and as useful to everyone on the call. We have a lot of people on today. So please go ahead and make those comments and share what you could share with your clients. It could seem like a lot. You've got all of these different news and opportunities and ideas. You just saw the word cloud that I posted up here. How often do you look forward to reading long, detailed emails from businesses? The big caution here in all of this content is that you need to strike the right balance of something that's interesting, but also concise and easy to read. You want to focus on the news, the details or the deal or the sale, and what action people need to take. And that's what you need to think about when you create your own emails. You're not gonna write tomes on all of this stuff. And likewise, you don't need to go too crazy with everything that you need to do. What you need to think about and consider, especially with all these different types of messaging that you can send, is that less is definitely more. There's no rule that says your newsletter needs to have three articles, five pictures, three links. One thing in an email is plenty. There's actually a constant contact customer whose newsletter is called One Thing, and he did it to make, him, to make it easy on himself. It works really well, people can absorb it, and he's not under the gun to come up with 17 different topics. We did a survey of our customers and found out that the best practice is to limit yourself to 20 lines of text and three or fewer images. Just like you, your audience is busy. 
you don't need to worry about sending a ton of information every time. Our research also shows that one link gets the absolute best click-through rate. You want your audience to take an action, so use that link to make it clear. Two links are okay, but once you get to three links, the click-through rate really starts to decline. Anything higher than five links means that people are less likely to click anywhere in your email. They're just going to get overwhelmed. So try to stick with only one or two clicks and keep them high in your message so people don't have to scroll down and take an action. It's not where's Waldo. This is get people to the point. Don't forget that more than half of your audience is reading an email on a mobile device. Who's going to throw, scroll through 14 articles on their cell phone? And for your mobile readers, make sure that you're keeping your messages short and your call to action above the fold, meaning readers don't have to scroll down to get to that most important content. Even if the idea of creating content still feels daunting, remember keeping your messages short and focused is actually much better than putting tons of email or info in one email. You can use outlines to help you further focus your ideas and organize the sections of your email. Any text you'll write yourself, any photos or videos you want to use, and any content from outside sources that you want to share, we'll talk about con content curation in a few minutes. Jot down a list of topics that come up in conversations with your customers, members, clients, volunteers, or donors, and use those to spark ideas for marketing campaigns. If you get five questions from your clients, that's five separate email topics that you can use to build on. Show your expertise in your field. Become a knowledgeable resource for your audience, and they'll look forward to emails from you. Here's a key. You are the expert. If you don't understand that, think about how clear that is. People are coming to you because you know more than they do. That might not, you might not feel like you're an expert in your field, but you're an expert compared to your clients. So don't be afraid to show some of that depth of knowledge and information that helps people feel more excited to work with you. And make sure that your messages reflect your brand. This is easy to do with, t with tools like Constant Contact, WordPress websites, and Facebook and other social media accounts. We're not going to get into design today, but you can visit the BusyWeb website for design tips and tricks to make all of your marketing look visually fantastic. And I'm going to give you a little hint. Some of the stuff that we've been building up for the past two weeks now is going to relate to very big news design-wise at BusyWeb. Let's talk about turning your interactions with your customers, clients, members, or supporters into content. Think for a second about the last interaction you had with someone in your organization. What questions did a customer or client have? What information are people requesting about your nonprofit? You can turn an answer into their questions into emails. Here's some great examples. One easy way to practice this in real life is to create two columns in a spreadsheet or document or just on a piece of paper with the questions you regularly get on the left. If you already have a frequently asked questions section on your website, that each of those questions is a ready-built blog post, social media post, or email that you can send to your clients. In the right column, write down a way that, or in the left column, you can write down the questions you regularly get, and then in the right column, write down a way that you can turn the answers to those questions into an email full of fresh and relevant content. So whether it's, how do I ensure my pipes won't burst this winter, turning that question into five ways to protect your pipes from freezing, what's a simple way to pick the right wine, red or white, five simple wine pairing tips, or how do I get more people to show up my events, 10 ways to sell more tickets at your next event, all of that content should be relatively simple. So think about what your people, what your customers are already asking, and answer those questions. I want to show you the difference between a regular email that you might send from your Mac mail, your Outlook, your Gmail, or Hotmail, or whatever, and one sent through an email marketing tool like Constant Contact. An email from a service provider looks better, and it gets you noticed. You can use it to feature your brand's logos and your colors, and, it in, and you can include graphics that will capture your reader's attention. All of this, including the graphics, comprises email content. With a combination of text and great images, you're going to really get through to your audience and stand out from your competition. And from a purely legal and practical perspective, Constant Contact and other email tools like that will help you provide or keep your messages from being considered as spam 
or even worse, breaking laws like the Can Spam Act. The email on the left is boring. It's not cool. It's not fun at all. It doesn't capture any attention. The email on the right has a lot of visual pop and appeal, and it gets right to the point, and it respects people's time and energy. This is built for someone that's browsing on the bus so that they can browse through things. If it's interesting to them, they can click on it, and we give them a click, e quick, easy way, in this case, to visit the site, and it just gets you off to what you're trying to do. There's a little known adage in email marketing in particular. The three words that rule your life are now, later, or never. You want to focus on the now. You want to get people to open your message now. If there's a content that you're going to provide that's even going to be later, later is really just, in our case, Minnesota nice for never because we don't have time. We all get dozens or hundreds of emails every day. So make sure that your email stands out, that you're not asking a huge time commitment from your visitor or from your clicker, and that you give them a quick and easy path to success, to getting the information that you promise. And don't forget that images are content as well. So visual content like photos, videos, graphics, and word images make a huge, huge impact in your email inbox. 90% of the in information processed by the brain is visual. And more than half of consumers believe that images are very important factors when buying. Visuals are important to your business because they influence purchasing decisions. 67% of consumers believe that images are a very important factor when selecting and purchasing a product. And if you think of it from a common sense standpoint, I'm not going to buy anything unless I can see it and rotate it around and visit it. You know, this is how Amazon makes all their money, right? So think like a big company give people examples and images. Creating visual content is incredibly easy. Almost anybody with a smartphone has the ability to shoot high quality photos and videos. You don't need a ton of time or a huge marketing budget to create compelling images anymore. You've got technology right in your pocket. Note that at times you might need professional communication and I talk about that in past busy webinars. If you're interested, just go to busyweb.com, search for video marketing, and we have an entire section on how to craft and know when to say when and go to a pro. All right, you can also um, use images to cut through the clutter. You've probably heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. In your email, you can communicate through images as well as text. Turn your images into clickable links so that when your readers click on images, they'll be directed to the action you want them to take. Just make sure you also include text in the same location because about 67% of email readers don't look at images by default. Email tools like Constant Contact make it easy to assign a URL to your images and also add alt text, that's SEO geek speak for the text that hovers or that shows up on your image when you hover your mouse over it or the, or the content that tells Google and your customer's browser what that image is and that's going to help you get those clicks even if images aren't turned on. As a side note, don't give too many choices in your campaign. These campaigns, these messages are all supposed to be quick decisions to act. Think about people walking down the sidewalk um, on their phone. If they're clicking in to stop on your online store or selecting an item or two and going off to buy, you know, too many choices reduce the number of actions that a person is likely to take. If you give them five options, they're probably just going to go away from overwhelm. Think about the 10 seconds that you have worth of attention in order to get people to the next step. When you're using images in your marketing, you're faced with the task of creating that content, deciding what images are best, and determining their context and the story around them. It's a lot to think about, and you're probably wondering where to begin. Here's some general direction. Images can be created around your business, your environment and what's around you, your expertise, and themes that you decide your audience will love. You don't have to be, have a product to sell to include visual content in your emails. If you have a new employee, feature their photo with a caption explaining who they are and what they're going to bring to your business and to your clients. If you're a nonprofit, share photos of a recent event or a graphic showing the progress of a fundraising campaign. 
Photos are a frequent and necessary piece for visual content. Sometimes you might find that you need a photo that you don't have or can't create on your own. There's a lot of stock photo sites that you can search for just the right photo that fits your needs. These are a great resource and can work well for visual content that's based around a theme, a tip, a fact, or a quote. It might be tempting to use images that you find through Google search, but don't do it. There is now, finally, a note or a way that you can search. You know, in the past like four months, they've added this where you can go into advanced search options in the Google image search and search for non-copyrighted images. But as a general rule, go with the tools that I'm about to share with you. You know, Go for a bigger photo, and you can always crop or scale it down and make sure that you're optimizing those messages for easy download. Just because you found or took a, po a photo that's eight megabytes on your phone, that doesn't mean that you should have an eight megabyte photo in your email or in your blog post. Shrink it down as much as possible. You've got all kinds of image options. Constant contact customers have access to 12 million images through Big Stock, but even if you're not a customer, you can get a free trial for, for new users off of Big Stock. You can also use Stock Vault, freeimages.com, or my personal favorite, photopin.com, P-H-O-T-O-P-I-N.com. Photopin has a ready-built library of several million images that are available under Creative Commons license out of the Flickr database. So super easy and super simple. Video is also a powerful way to engage with your audience. People prefer watching a video over reading long web pages full of text. When using a video, make sure you mention in your subject line that your email includes a video so your readers know about it right away. Customers can prefer watching a video to reading long text articles. In fact, 50% are more likely to read emails that include a video. But make sure the length of your video is under 90 seconds. That's the point at which 58% of viewers will simply stop watching. You can make video work for your business. Use it to show product demos, customer testimonials, promotional material, or share user-generated content. We're talking about email and digital marketing today, but video is really becoming prominent on social media. 84% of consumers have liked videos from customers in their social media news feeds. If you email a video link, you can also repurpose it on your social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, in order to get people to watch, connect, and share. The example here is a great way to use a video. The Pajama Program sent this email out with a link to a video thanking their donors. Just remember to keep that video short. Set it a few times, but your audience is busy. Video should be 90 seconds or less. If you're using video in a careful, deliberate way, you'll be fine. You just have to have a specific action that you want your readers to take. To register for an event, you could choose text and pictures rather than video, or using a video that would lessen the likelihood that your readers would take action is definitely a no-no because you want to get people to take the next step. Also note that if you do have a long video, to people can see that it's like four minutes long and they're more, much less likely to even click on it. But if they see that it's a minute or 90 seconds long, they're much more likely to click. Also think about what happens in news feeds in social networks. If you have an auto-played video, remember that audio doesn't automatically play on that video when it gets started. So your video needs to stand all on its own without audio. And so if you're thinking about this and as you're scrolling up and down in your Facebook feed, for example, if you have a beautiful video that fades in from black over five seconds and has James Earl Jones reading a, reading a narration on what's going on in your company, Nobody's going to see it because all they're going to see is black as they're scrolling through their newsfeed. So if you have content that is text or that it's audio that you need people to hear, you're going to want to use closed captioning. And there's tools available in both YouTube and on a lot of the popular video editing programs to add closed captions to your videos. All right, we've talked about creating. Let's go now into curating. We're gonna find and distribute content that's relevant, educational, entertaining, and newsworthy. Just checking that I don't have any questions. Looks like we're good and we still have a lot of people on, so don't be shy. If you do have questions, click the green Ask a New Question button and would love to have you 
ask those questions. Again, if you're feeling shy, you can just send a note to davidbusyweb.com and I'll help you out later. All right, so in curation, at this point you might be feeling overwhelmed, thinking you have to think up infinite ideas to create content from scratch. Not the case at all. You know you don't have time to share the operation of your small organization, and that's cool. The great news is that you can curate content, meaning you can find content created by others and share it with your marketing contacts. Think about yourself as the curator of an art museum. That person uses their expertise to collect and present artwork from many different sources and arranges them in a way that's educational and organized. They're not responsible for painting every canvas. Your curated content could be a link to a news article related to your organization with a brief paragraph including your perspective. The example on the screen is of a cycling company sharing their favorite headlines in cycling news for a weekly newsletter. All they had to do was write a brief description and then link to the articles. Your audience will come to rely on you as an expert in your field. Let's say you run an animal shelter and you come across an article about coyotes in your area. You can use uh, curated content to link to helpful tips for pet owners to keep their dogs and cats safe. Or perhaps you own a restaurant and a new food trend has been talked about in the national media. You can link to a video from a TV station and tell your contacts how you've added some trendy items to your menu. Think of it kind of as Oreo posts. So an Oreo post is a brief introduction from you, the content that you found elsewhere with a link back to the original source, and then the other cookie is your explanation on why this is cool or your take on the snippet that you've just included. There's a couple of caveats here, of course. You only share snippets or small bits of information. Always link back and make sure that you give proper credit where credit is due. So where to find all of this crazy content? There's lots of different places online where you can find content to share. Read your local and regional news. Maybe you've been mentioned, or maybe you just have something to say about goings on in your community. A lot of news sites offer their content for free. Just make sure that if you link to content on a news site, it's not something that requires a subscription to read. You can read blogs related in your field. One way to easily gather lots of blog posts is through using an RSS reader like Feedly. That's F-E-E. D-L-Y, or to go to Alltop, A-L-L-T-O-P, to browse a list of all the top blogs in almost everything under the sun. They have several hundred, perhaps even more than a thousand, different categories of blogs, and they've curated the most interesting blogs, all the top blogs, in each of those industries. So you probably have an Alltop feed for your industry. You should also follow others on social media. There's a, lot of, in, there's a lot of possibilities in your Twitter feed or Facebook or LinkedIn. Going back to the animal shelter example, you might want to follow other shelters, the ASPCA, pet realtors or real retailers, and other animal advocacy groups and share content from those sources. You can set up Google Alerts. If you want to know how to set up Google Alerts, just Google Google Alerts but Google is going to aggregate pages that mention a specific phrase or brand name that you've created an alert for. You should definitely set one using your organization's name to keep an eye on what people are saying about you online. Also subscribe to other email lists. It's a great way to get ideas for content and see what other people are sharing. One thing that I like to do is subscribe to organizations that are similar, than, similar to my own, but in far-fetched areas. So I like to follow and connect with New York-based agencies or LA-based agencies or Chicago-based agencies. I'm not really competing against those people. So seeing what they're doing and connecting with them and engaging is a great way to non-competitively reach out and see what other folks are doing. The key thing, of course, is don't forget to give credit to the original author or source of where you found that information. Some people have asked whether it's plagiarism to share content by other people. Definitely not as long as you cite your source. Share what's publicly available, but again, don't overdo it. Don't take the entire article, take a paragraph or a sentence. You're helping that source broaden their audience if you do this by sharing their content with your audience. The difference between sharing and plagiarism is citing the source and length, of course. If you were to copy and paste someone else's blog post and pass it off as your own, 
That's plagiarism, and that's also copyright infringement. Just don't do it. One way to get creative and share content easily is to share via email and to have other people share that or share and create that content for you. You could go through behind the scenes videos or photos like this one from Avenue Gallery showing one of its employees loading a painting to be transported. You can also use client or customer testimonials. There's a few ways you can approach these. You can ask a client to share their story or video, write a paragraph about their experience, or if you have a place on your website for reviews, you can pull content right from those reviews. You can also compile user-generated content. BusyWeb has a few clients that are local TV news stations, um, public access stations. They broadcast and collect source news, and you've seen this before on other video news sites and news sites in general. They ask for reader submissions. Do the same thing. What was it like working with you? What was the connection? What, what happened? What did you do? What did you see? If you're a nonprofit, pull those folks in your local community or in your industry to say what your experience was or what their experience was based on what that is. This might be a great way to take advantage of or leverage hashtags or those pound signs that you see on Twitter with little codes after them. That's all content that people can search for. And so if you have a, a hashtag or start a hashtag that's related to your business or things that you want to share, go ahead and do so and use some of that content. But again, always cite the source. Now we're going to talk about how you can extend your reach beyond your email audience. Of course, once you've decided what content you're going to use in communications, you need to share it. That way you'll extend your reach as much as possible. Using email is one way to share content, but you can also share it through social media, your blog posts, and other things. Email marketing tools like Constant Contact make it easy for you to share your content on different platforms with a single click. WordPress also does this very easily. Whenever someone posts to a busy web-powered website, that act of publishing also posts content on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, Tumblr, and more. When you're thinking about content and how to use it on social media, you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use content you've already sent in those emails and break it into smaller pieces of social media content. This isn't going to translate into a lot of extra work for you. You're already building out content for the future as you focus on your emails. For example, let's say you're a marketing consultant for a business that runs a lot of events and you've sent an email to those clients with four tips about selling more tickets for their events. We'll call that the original email. Next, let's quickly think of a few ways to extend the content by expanding on each tip in its very own social media post. The tip on sending your invitations in advance could be expanded into a Facebook post about when to send your event invitations. Hanging flyers in your store could be turned into a great infographic on effective flyer design that you can share across all your social networks. Advice to post events on Facebook could expand to a blog post on promoting events on Facebook that you can share across all your social networks. And a tip about special pricing for VIPs could be repurposed into five tweets spread across a week about things VIPs or very important people want. Here's an example of a company, the Grafton Inn in Vermont, repurposing content. They used this image of a porch swing in their email, which announced summer activities at the inn. They repurposed the photo on Facebook to show their weekly schedule. And on Instagram, they shared it with their followers with a cute caption. Now, do keep a few things in mind. First, change the content a little bit for each network. I'm not talking about its size. Change the caption or the text in the post to reflect the style, etiquette, and voice for each network. Don't post exactly the same thing in each place. That's one of the nice things about the tools that we use at BusyWeb when we do auto posting from our website to social networks. We have settings that automatically adjust the content based on the needs of that specific um, market. Facebook posts have an image and text and are a little bit longer. Twitter is very short. Usually it's just the headline and we do attach an image because now Twitter engagement has gone through the roof whenever you can attach a picture. Don't really worry about being repetitive though. People are following you because they like you. They might miss your post on Facebook, but catch it later on Pinterest. 
or they might follow you on Pinterest and not Facebook. So you may need to make sure you're covering all the places people might be seeing your content. Finally, while we're talking about using multiple social networks, keep in mind that you don't have to use all of them for your business. Just choose the ones that are right for you and your audience. It's better to focus on a couple networks and do a good job with them than to have a whole bunch that you're trying to keep up with to burn out and to give up entirely. When it comes to extending your reach, you want to make sure that you're meeting your audience where they are. Email in particular is a great place to start, but you can reach more people by sharing your email content on all of your social media platforms. Think about it this way. There's probably some overlap between your email contact lists and your followers on social media, but those groups are not likely to be identical. Also, what your followers do on social media, their followers see. If someone likes or comments on your post or Facebook, all of their friends will see that and see your name. Marketing on social media tends to be less expensive than traditional marketing. If cost is an issue, you'll get much more return on your time, money, and energy by going first through email and then subsequently through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and others with incredibly targeted campaigns. Each has its own typical audience and decision process. You want to start on the social networks you already use and then begin to move to where your customers and contacts are so that you can leverage the existing network you have on those sites and begin to generate some social visibility. To be clear, email is a part of social media. If you're doing it right, keeping messages short, making the action or responses obvious and simple, and providing access, information, and real value, then you're going to grow your business. The best part of all of this is, if you're already a constant contact customer, sharing on your emails and social media is super easy. If you're using constant contact, add the share bar to the top of your emails. This allows your readers to post a link to your email in their social media profiles. Add a social media button that you can link your business's social media profiles to. These buttons are a nice visual reminder for your followers and the people that read your emails to click and follow you on all of those networks and remind your audience to share your promotions, ask them to like them on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, or repin on Pinterest. Your audience has a lot of influence via word of mouth. You can get your promotions in front of more people, their friends and family, if they help spread the word for you. Constant Contact allows you to extend the reach of your emails by using the Social Share tool. Social Share offers a quick and easy way to share emails on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn with suggested post messages images, and the best times to schedule posts based on when your social audience is most active. It also makes it easy to plan social posts for email with a monthly calendar. Now let's talk about the next steps that you can take. Remember when you're thinking of content that you'll create from scratch, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your audience. So, use links to direct your audience where you want them to go and make your messages relevant, short, and focused with the call to action very clear. It can be very helpful to keep a calendar to schedule emails and social media posts ahead of time. Keep that running list of topics that come up in your organization and plan out your publishing schedule in whatever way works best for you. There's no hard and fast rule about how you should schedule. Just make sure that whatever you do is realistic for you to follow, whether you use an Outlook calendar, a Google Doc, Notes app on your mobile device, or anything else that keeps you organized. If you're using an email marketing service like Constant Contact, you can track which types of content get the most clicks and opens and use that information as a guide for future emails. You can also, from time to time, send out a survey for your to your audience to ask what types of content they'd prefer to receive from you. Remember, Marketing is measuring. If you're not measuring and if you're not thinking about and, and checking how your messages are being received, it's really hard to improve. So just keep measuring, keep looking at the, at the contacts, the, the click-throughs, all of the helpful, interesting content that's out there and what's working, do more of, and what's not, adjust and keep moving forward. In the beginning of this presentation, I said that email content boils down to a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. You can use this as a really basic outline to create content for any subject you can think of. 
Take the last question you answered for a customer, client, donor, or volunteer, and develop an email around it using a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. Let's go back to our first example about vacations in Hawaii. And say our customer question is, what offers are available for renting in Kauai? First, the picture. Remember, 90% of information absorbed by the brain is visual, so how you, can you illustrate the subject to catch your reader's attention? Don't forget you can use stock photography, just use tools like PhotoPen, and you don't need to be selling a product to use visuals. This photo of a beautiful seaside cliff in Hawaii grabs the reader and makes them want to learn more about seeing it in person. Next, what is it that you need to write? Respond to that last question that you were asked. Your paragraph can be just a few words introducing a link, a longer explanation about the subject that goes back to your website, or tips to answer a question in a few steps. In the example, the paragraph explains that rentals are available and that every third night is free. Finally, you need a call to action. What do you want your audience to do in reaction to this message? Come to your business for a consultation, buy a product, register for an event, donate, buy, make your call to action prominent and clear. Here, the call to action is a link where readers can go to the vacation company's website and see and hopefully reserve the available rentals in Kauai. All right, so that is what we've got. Just making sure we don't have any questions. It looks like we're good. So let's go into the opportunity for questions. If you have additional questions, just send me an email at dave at busyweb.com. I'll have that link in just a moment again. If you're not already on Constant Contact, there is a free trial offer that you can use. And if you actually sign up for a paid account, which starts at $20 a month, you can get a free custom template built by Constant Contact, usually a $200 value, by going to busyweb.com cc and following that link to sign up. Again, no big things going on. There's a 60-day free trial where you don't have to enter in your credit card or any other information um, and just go ahead and check it out. Incredibly helpful. You can use everything revolving around constant contact, including importing your list and starting some of that marketing all for free for the first 60 days. And then if you decide to stick with it, you'll get a free template to match your company. If you'd like more information or to try some of this stuff and to get more info about how to do online marketing or digital marketing of any stripe, go to busyweb.com slash events and search for some of that content. And if you'd like more information, go to blogsconstantcontact.com slash library for a lot more retainer information. So things that are applicable to almost any specific vertical market. They'll show you regular constant contact click-through rates, um, types of marketing that work well for different types of businesses. There's all kinds of really helpful and handy stuff out there. If you'd like to stay in touch with us, send a text message to 22828 and simply type busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y. Note that your autocorrect might try to switch that to B-U-S-Y, but you need the text B-I-Z-Z-Y to 22828 to get added to our email newsletter. And what we offer on those email newsletters is first come, first serve access to these busy webinars and other helpful and informative articles. We don't sell anything on our, on our newsletters or in our emails. What we do is try to get to you as much helpful and interesting information as possible in the shortest amount of time as we can. So go ahead and register. Finally, if you would like the slide deck from today to keep access to all of those great tips and pointers, just send me an email at dave at busyweb.com or give me a call at 612-293-9323 or 612-424-9990. And remember, again, sign up for Constant Contact at busyweb.com slash cc for that 60-day free trial and the $200 offer for a free template. Or if you'd like a buzz report to look at your marketing and get a 10-page report back on what you could do to improve, go to busyweb.com slash buzz. That's it. That's me. I'm going to take a couple of minutes break, and then I'm going to go over to Facebook Live and have everything done by the top of the hour. Thank you very much for joining us today. I am Dave Meyer at BusyWeb. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And remember at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung.
Have a great day.